friends, it's Rana and I'm here today because my damas forgot that I made a 5 star prediction video like a year ago and I just remembered it so we are here to wrap it up see if I actually was right about my predictions and gave these books 5 stars and at the end of this video we will make a new round of 5 star predictions the first book I predicted that I'm gonna love and give 5 stars is City of Brass by S.A. Chakraporty this is the first book in a fantasy trilogy called the Devabad trilogy it is inspired by Islam and the Middle Eastern mythology it is set in the 18th century at the start of the book. It is also set in Cairo following a con artist called Nahri. She accidentally summons a gen warrior called uh, Dara who finds out that she isn't fully human young lady and he takes her away with him to Devibad, a city of jinn and she is somehow bound to that city. We also follow Prince Ali Zayd al Qahtani who is the second son of the Devibad king and he is a devout muslim who isn't really very happy with the way uh, shafits are treated in devabad and shafits are jinn who are not pure bloods and this book follow all of these three people and see how they are connected and many things happen and it is full of political intrigue i read this book and i quite enjoyed it i was so happy to read about a fantasy book inspired by my religion and my culture and i never read anything like it before if you missed it i made two videos about this book the first one is a non-spoilery review and the second one is like a pronunciation guide to all the arabic and islamic names in this book if you haven't seen my review at first I give this book 4 out of 5 stars but after sitting on it for a while yeah I had some issues with it here and there but they aren't really that big for me to give it only 4 stars because I really really enjoyed this book so at the end I gave it 5 out of 5 stars so it is the first successful prediction for today the second fantasy book I have on this list is The Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson you can see how late I am <laughs> to make this wrap up video because I read this one at the start of 2022. Again, I have non-spoiler review of this book on my channel. I also have a spoiler review of the second book and I'm currently in the middle of reading the third book, but I'm taking a break of the series. If you don't know, this is the first book in an um, epic fantasy series that is very popular everywhere, not just on the internet. And it is the what was it called? The Stormlight Archive by Brandon Sanderson. I'm not gonna even try to explain what the plot is about, but this book, the first one, was a solid first book in the start of this epic series, and I gave it 4 out of 5 stars. I didn't give it 5 stars because it didn't quite reach that point for me, because it was a bit slow and heavy on the word building, and it is understandable for being the first book in the series, but I didn't give it the five stars but four stars for me I consider a success because I don't easily give five stars the second book though of the series words of radiance I give that one five out of five stars the third prediction I have is a historical fiction book by Kristen Hanna and it is the four winds this is the third book I ever read by Kristen Hanna and unfortunately it is my least favorite one out of the three it is set in Texas in 1921 following Elsa Walcott, who is considered too tall, too ugly, too old to get married. But through some circumstances, she ends up marrying Rafi. I think his name was Rafi. He is a man she barely knows. And by 1934, uh, the Great Depression hits America and she decides to move with her kids to California to pursue a better life for them. Sadly, I found this book to be boring and hollow compared to the nightingale and the great alone i didn't like any of the characters and didn't feel for them like i did in the other two books everything felt rushed but at the same time nothing happened and the ending it felt like it was forced like uh, kristen hannah wanted to make another tear jerking ending like the nightingale but in my opinion it failed and it didn't even get me teary-eyed, I just was bored. I give it 3 out of 5 stars and it is low-key a fail 5 star prediction. The next book we have is The Island of Sea Women by Lisa C. This is another historical fiction book. It is set in Jeju Island in South Korea and it like follows the lifespan of a uh, henyo. Uh, henyo is 
Diver Women of Jeju Island. The book starts in 1930s and a little bit of jumping back and forth to the current time. It talks about friendship, family, and war. I really love this book. It is so heartbreaking and so sad, yet I fell in love with it. I really, really enjoyed my time reading this book, even though it was heartbreaking. And I believe that it is a new favorite historical fiction for me, for sure. If you want to hear more about my thoughts about this book, you can go and watch my Asian Readathon wrap up because I talked more about it there. I obviously gave it five out of five stars and it is another successful prediction. Then we have the only classic on my list and it is The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. I feel hesitant talking about this book because I prefer that if you go and read it without knowing anything about it aside from the title and the author because that's how I went into it and that's how I enjoyed it and I was surprised by many things in it. It is better for you to read it without knowing anything about it, no details, no spoilers, just read it. It is so short and so easy to read as a classic. It was published in 1896 and it is a gothic novel. I gave it, surprisingly, 4 out of 5 stars and I find this to be amazing because it's been a while since I had the urge to read the classics because I was afraid of not enjoying them and I ended up enjoying the only classic I read in 2022 which is this one. And the last book I have on my second round of five star predictions is A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. This is a YA mystery thriller book. This book is extremely popular and hyped here on booktube and the booktube community in general. It follows Pip, a high school girl who decides that for her finally project she's gonna reopen a closed case and reinvestigate it. Uh, the closed case happened in her town five years ago where a high school girl went missing then a few days later um, her boyfriend her ex-boyfriend was found dead so they decided to blame the dead ex-boyfriend for her disappearance and murder and he felt so guilty he ended up killing himself a few days later and they closed the case but Pip our main character doesn't believe that Sal the boyfriend actually did it. This book was taking the internet by storm for three years now and it is objectively a very good book but I didn't enjoy it as much as everyone else and it is this time I admitted it is me not you kind of situation because I listened to the audiobook while Ubering back home every day from work and after work, I was a little bit tired, so I wasn't really focusing on the audiobook and I missed a whole lot of things. So I gave it 3 out of 5 stars. I know it deserves more than that, but I didn't quite enjoy the story as everyone else because of my mistake listening to the audiobook. So I said it previously, I'm planning to reread this book using this physical copy in 2023 hopefully but i can see why everyone loved this book so these were all of my predictions and i think i did quite better than the first round and now for a new round of five star predictions as usual i picked six new five star predictions because i hate odd numbers and i didn't want to make five five star predictions so six it is so i picked two fantasy books two historical fiction books and two non-fiction books Half of these are from my physical TBR shelf. The first gigantic book I have, a fantasy, is The Empire of Gold by S.A. Chakraporty. It is the third book in the Davy Bad trilogy, which the City of Brass was the first book for. I gave it five stars, as I said. The second book, Kingdom of Copper, four stars. And this one, I believe I'm gonna give five stars. I know this book gonna take me at least two months to finish when I start reading it because it is 790 pages but I know I'm gonna love it. The second fantasy slash dystopia slash thriller slash I don't know what genre this book is, is Battle Royale by Kushun Takami. I've been eyeing this book for so long after I heard that uh, it is the original Hunger Games. People said it is the Hunger Games before the Hunger Games and some people even accu accused the author of Hunger Games of stealing the idea from this Japanese author. So I want to read it to see the similarities between these two books. As for the historical fiction book that I have on my TBR and I predict that I'm gonna love is Pillars of the Earth by Ken Follett. I know I have talked about this book so many times in so many videos want, saying that I want to read it but I still haven't. 
but I know I'm gonna love it but I still haven't read it <laughs> and I think it is quite obvious why I haven't read it yet and because I am afraid of the sheer size of it it is close to 1000 pages it is a commitment to read this book but I'm gonna do it and I know I'm gonna love it the other historical fiction book is I Must Betray You by Ruta Sepetis Ruta Sepetis is one of my favorite historical fiction authors ever I read three of her books and I love them and she since published two other books and I still haven't read them and I Must Betray You is one of these two books that I really want to read and I have a strong feeling that it's going to be another favorite do I know what it is about? no do I trust my Ruta for this one? yes as for the non-fiction books I have Being Mortal by Atul Gawandi a book about death, medicine and what matters in the end I recently came to realize that I'm in love with non-fiction books about medicine, death, and doctors, and this one is all of these three things, so I have a strong feeling that it won't let me down. And lastly, The Man Who Mistook His Wife for a Hat by Oliver Sacks. This book is another non-fiction medical book about clinical tales and stories of patients that had bizarre cases of neuro neurological diseases. This book I really want to buy and read physically, but after I finish my one year book buying ban. So that's it for today's video. I hope you liked it. Please subscribe to see my future videos and I will see you next time. Bye.